Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here today. I hope you've enjoyed the day so far. I really like the food. I really liked everything here, all the photos we've been taking. My name is Amanda Cavallaro. This is Marina. Uh, we come from the UK to be here today. A little bit about me. I am a GDG Cloud Organizer. GDG stands for Google Developer Groups. I am also um, a Google Developers Expert for Firebase and some other categories. I'm a Women Tech Makers Ambassador, and I also work as a developer advocate at a communications API called Vonage, and I have my co-speaker here today. Yes, hello, my name is Manuela. I am a Flutter developer at Flaconi and also a Women Tech Makers Ambassador and a Flutter Meetup Berlin organizer. And I'm very happy to be here uh, with my two other co-speakers. Um, it's a big, big honor to speak with two people. Um, so yes, I'm sure you are all um, have guessed from our title. We are talking about an appointment scheduling app in um, Flutter and also in JavaScript. And um, as you may know, this is Dash and this is Sparky. And we thought that Dash and Sparky could build a special app, an app for Puff, our beloved um, Firebase Dev Rel from uh, Firebase. And yeah, so those two are deciding to build an app, so let's help them build this app for Puff. So before we start building our app, let's talk about Firebase. So Firebase consists of three main product branches. So the first one is grow your app, the second one is build better apps, and the third one is improve app quality. And we are focusing today on the real-time database, which is one of their database ah. products. And as you can see, yeah, she agrees, like, <laughs> we, have, we have two um, database products. And um, Cloud Firestore is the second one, and yeah, let's talk about the differences. Amanda will walk us through this. Yeah. So uh, the, the main difference between them is that with Cloud Firestore, you can do SQL-like uh, queries, whereas you cannot do in the Firebase real-time database. Um, if I were to use like a real product in production, I would go for a Cloud Firestore, whereas when I work on my demonstrations, when I, I speak at conferences, when I worked on, on my thesis for my university, I use the real-time database. So when I want to get something, you know, prototyped, something done fast, I, do, I use the real-time database, and that's the one that we are going to use today. Uh, thank you. So now um, let's get back to our scheduling app. So, um, basically, Puff's scheduling app consists of a few functionalities. Um, so the user can schedule an appointment, the user can delete an appointment, and appointments can be made in five-minute intervals. Um, the user will receive an SMS with appointment information if they are booking over web. And you can see the web version on the black phone and the Flutter version on the white phone. So that's the end product. So to achieve this app, we need specific tools and dependencies. So for this, we use Flutter Fire CLI for Flutter, um, Firebase Core for um, our Firebase Core API, Firebase Database for our Firebase Real-Time Database API, and UID to create unique identifiers that we assign to our appointments. And I use Flutter block as my state management. You can use whatever state management you want to. There is no need to use Flutter block if you don't like to. And of course, Firebase real-time database. So Amanda, what do you use for JavaScript? Yeah, if you want to geek out and build this with JavaScript, the things that we're going to need is JavaScript for the front end. For the server side, we, we would use Node.js and Express.js, then we, yeah, ExpressJS. We, uh, we'd also use the Firebase tools and the Firebase real-time database service, the Vonage APIs to send SMS messages. And finally, we're using a dependency called UUID that generates long strings that are going to be unique for when we create um, our users. So the users are added to the, to the, to the real-time database using uh, that library. So that's the tech stack for JavaScript. 
So, now that we talked about the tech stack, let's go quickly through our game plan. So, first of all, we have to set up the Firebase project, then we have to create the database and install Firebase on our local machine, initialize the Firebase local project and implement the business logic. In the end, we add content style functionalities and test it out. Yeah, so let's say we're starting to build our project. Now, this is not a workshop. We're just walking you through um, how to do it, but we share the GitHub code at the end, so you can do it in your own time. So let's start, let's start setting, up, setting up the dashboard. What you would do is you go to the Firebase console. It's a website. It's a website. Uh, then in there, you would create, uh, you would give your project a name. In our case, we gave the name of F3 appointment. And as you can see, right below where it's written in blue, which is the top one, uh, there is, you can see there is a pencil that you can edit, and that is the, um, the ID. Whenever you create a project, Firebase project, that's also a Google Cloud Platform project. So if you were looking for the project within the projects that you have previously created, that's where you would see it. My tip for you is whenever you're creating it, update it with a name that you would like in case you wanted to host it and that be a website or something that you would like in the future because that cannot be changed in the future. So in my case, there were some numbers before, but then I updated it to have that name that I liked. So that's the first thing we would do. Then we would go to the next slide. And then after that, I would choose if I want to use um, analytics, Google Analytics or not. After that, I would click to create the project and that would take a little time to build because we're creating um, the GCP, the Firebase project. So that takes, that takes a little while. And then after that, uh, What's important for us, because we are saving the information in the, in the database, we have to create a database. So from the dashboard, we will clip, click on the button to create a database, and that will create a real-time database instance for us. Um, with that, before you actually get to create it, it would ask you uh, where you would like to host it. Uh, you probably choose somewhere near you uh, in Europe, and that's where the project would live. Um, and then, okay, so now we have the real-time database, and then the next thing that we have to do is import some data into it. Um, I have uh, added a picture there on the left, that's how you would see, so you would go on the three little dots, you would click to import, and you would look for the file that you can download from your computer. Um, in our case, it is a file, a JSON file, which is something I should have said before when I was uh, saying about the differences between Firestore and, um, and the real-time database, because when we're, we're working with the real-time database, there are JSON files, whereas when you're working with Cloud Firestore, there are documents. So you would download the JSON file, and in there, you can see we are ha already have three nodes with some um, slots. You can see um, that we have a date that contains the date and the time, a user ID generated with UUID, and then we have three of them. That would mean that when the app um, is running, you would already have three slots allocated in there. And after that, you would add the database rules. The rules are important to show you who can access, uh, how the indexes are built, and how the data is structured. If you're always working from the dashboard, you would see a tab in there that you can edit everything that you would like, how you're going to index everything, and then click on publish. If you're working from a, a file on your computer that later, at a later time you're going to deploy it, you would have um, a Firebase rules file where you would add those rules. And that's how it would look in a nutshell. Here's an example on how we are removing some information from the database. We can add and cancel appointment appointments, and they would appear and disappear from the from the real-time database in real time. So now that we have set up everything for our database, let's install Firebase on our local machine. Um, and this is very quick. So we just have to type in npm install Firebase tools. Um, there are also other ways of installing Firebase, but we chose to use npm. And after installing, we can log into the terminal um, through Firebase, Firebase login, so keep your Firebase credential handy. 
So let's prepare initialization for our Flutter app. So there are two ways of initializing um, the app. And one is the manual way, which is not recommended anymore, but for people that worked with Firebase before, they might know that um, back in the days, you would go into the Firebase console, um, would register your app, get your Google service JSON, and put it into your um, like iOS and Android folders. But this changed with Flutterfire. So let's prep initialization. So with Flutterfire, we are activating it with Dart Pub Global activating, Activate Flutterfire CLI. And with that, we can kickstart our Flutterfire workflow. The Flutterfire workflow, since we are logged in, will find which um, projects are under our account. And we can choose one account or create a new, um, or like one new project. And since Flutter is multi-platform, you can also choose which platform um, should we configure. And this whole workflow will, in the end, yield a uh, Firebase option.dart um, file, which creates or like created some um, setup code for Firebase. And inside this generated file, you see something like this. So this is for iOS. Um, you see there's the API key, the app ID, and what not. And we will need that later on in our main method for our Flutter app. So now that we prepped initialization, let's talk about actually initializing Firebase. So for Flutter, it's quite easy. We put um, in the Firebase.initialize app that we get from the Firebase core SDK um, into our main method. Mind you, you have to put it after widget Flutter's binding ensure initialized because Firebase needs some specific um, Flutter components or plugins to be initialized first. And Amanda will tell you now how this works all in JavaScript. Yes, in JavaScript, we will type Firebase in it, and that gives you the ability to be able to initialize whatever service you would like to use. So when you do Firebase in it, it gives you um, many uh, options that you can choose from, but if you already knew what you wanted to initialize, you could go like Firebase in it, hosting, Firebase in it, Firestore. So that's the first step for us. Um, since we already created the project from the dashboard before, when we had the when we have the options, we would choose use an existing project, and with with that, we would choose the um, the ID of the project we have already created. And at that point, you would also choose the services that you need. In our case, Firebase Real Time Database. And then after that, you have to create a service account. Going back to the dashboard, you would see a tab written service account. And that is, that is okay, it's back working. And so the service account would be used to grant services, to access the Google Cloud resources. Um, so the ones we're using, real-time database. And uh, just, sorry, just before you go to the, to the next slide. You can see here that I'm talking about JavaScript, so this, this one doesn't have the Flutter option. She's already shown you uh, how you can do it. So you can see there are a few programming languages there that you would do. Um, you would copy the code from there. I'm not a big fan of using var, so whenever um, I copy it, I make sure that I'm using either let or, or const. And then that would initialize everything, passing the credentials, and the database URL can be, find, can be found on the dashboard. And now let's talk UI. So uh, for JavaScript, the JavaScript, pro JavaScript project we were building, we would use for content, HTML, for how it looks like, we would use CSS. So for HTML, um, there are, so everything you can see in there, they are inputs, and then you have different input types. For the one we are using for the for the dates, there is one called date time local that actually gives you a date picker, but then it doesn't deal with all the inconsistency. If, if you ever worked with date and time zones and things, you know it's quite hard. So that wouldn't deal with that. If the, it was like a real project, I would use a more robust dependency. But for this project, just to try it out, I use this input, uh, date time local that deals with that. Um, then I would also add the phone number uh, to the person that you're going to send, that slot that you booked. 
Uh, and then there's also the code that's going to be used to remove the slots that Manuela is going to show you later on. For CSS, I've done a visual uh, validation. It's not a server-side validation that uh, whenever you add the information to the input, you see a green tick. If the information is not there, when you try to submit it, you would see a red cross out. Yeah. So for Flutter, it's quite easy. I use the Flutter widgets out of the box. Um, I use the material design time and date picker. And with that, you can book your slot. Um, also, my Flutter app will show um, some string if um, an appointment was already booked or something. Um, it's also like a visual and text feedback. So now that we talked UI, let's talk about what kind of dependencies we need and how to initialize them. Yeah, so in JS, we would create a folder. If you're using the command line, you could go uh, make dear, the name of the folder, appointment scheduler, and then you CD inside that folder. Then you do NPM in it. That's going to prompt you to add some information about your project, uh, the description, the name of the person doing it, if there is any website. But Actually, there's like loads of things that you add about the project. And after, after that, we would install the dependencies that I previously talked to you about. We have the Vonage, Server SDK to add the uh, ability to send SMS, .env to deal with the environment variables, UUID, Express, Firebase Admin, and Firebase Functions. So we need also some specific dependencies in Flutter. We talked about that before. So um, I added the packages just with Flutter pub add and then package name. And it's important whenever you add a new Firebase um, dependency that you update your configuration with Flutter Fire configure. Um, please <laughs> clean uh, your Flutter uh, dependencies or like your build folder afterwards because um, if you don't, uh, you will have like outdated dependencies and your Flutter app won't work. Um, and then Flutter bub get again, please. And now um, we talk about handling environment variables because our secret should stay secret. Yes, so for this project, if you're building with JavaScript, one of the options that you could do is use the .env uh, dependency. So for this project, the uh, the API keys that we're going to use is the Firebase real time uh, the Firebase real time database URL that I showed you. You could see it from the service account. Uh, then you would create an account with Vonage, and from there you would see the API key and the API secret, and you could either use a phone number that you already have or you could purchase a phone number from there. And by the way, if you want to try this out, I can give you some credits with 10 euros to try and send some SMS. Uh, so you would use all of these um, API keys to build that. And um, I hear it's different how we're doing Flutter or maybe similar. Well, the main thing is we have to uh, keep our secret secrets, so we have to hide our API keys. And um, there are many different ways to hide your um, environment variables in Flutter. I use the package nvid, um, but you can also use the dart define command. Um, so one thing, if you use the recommended way of registering Firebase to your app, you will have this Firebase options.dart file that I was talking about before. And this one has all your API keys baked inside of them. So before you push that file, please remove them and put it into a .env file. Um, so you hide them well. Yeah, just for the people who are scanning QR codes behind beans and stuff, some of them are found on this slide as well, just saying. Um, so to book an appointment, there are a few things that we have to do. I don't have my glasses. We can, can you go back? Uh, we can uh, add data to the database, check for availabilities, and send SMS with the Vonage APIs. Let me talk a little bit more about these. So we first start with a function, which is to check if a slot is available. How would that work? So you have this slot that you're trying to add. What happens is we check, does this already exist on the real-time database? It doesn't, good, so let's add it. If not, it will not be able to be added there. So what happens after that? We checked it, if it's available or not. It's available, great, let's go to the next step. 
uh, okay, it's available. So at the same time we are going to add it to the database, we also send an SMS message using the Vonage API to the phone number that you had added uh, from the web, web app or the app using Flutter. So that uh, message would contain uh, the time, the date, and the code in case the person would like to delete it. Yes, and after that, we th that's how you can use the Vonage API to send an SMS message, just a few lines of code. And with the same API, you could also send WhatsApp messengers, Facebook messenger. Do we call, still call it Facebook messenger or we say meta messenger now? Not sure. So <laughs> that product, we could also use it, just a few more lines of code using the same API. And then after that, all the information is added to the database, uh, including the code and the user ID generated with that dependency I previously told you about. And now that we've added everything, I just wanted to kind of go through everything I said and just add a few more information about it. So uh, to add the appointment, you use node and run the name of the main file where, where you have JavaScript and everything written then that is going to run in a port. You go to localhost and the port from your browser, you add the information about the appointment, you book everything, uh, then if it's available, there's going to be an SMS confirmation message and the information is added to the Firebase real-time database. Boom, everything works, it's cool. And we have our first user. So Sparky is going to book an appointment scheduler right now, he adds everything to it. Everything working okay? I hear there's another user as well. So Dash books her apartment appointment as well. <laughs> and um, now we're gonna go over how to delete an appointment because Dash can't keep her appointment with Puff. I'm gonna go back for the QR code. I, I hear there are some QR codes. Some people even have them on their foreheads. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. Just checking that everyone is ready. I bet if you try to book an appointment with Puff, even in every five minutes, you wouldn't be able to. <laughs> Very full schedule. Yeah, I believe so. So I think everyone has scanned the QR code. Yep. Um, so there are different ways of deleting data. And um, this comes handy since Dash has an important date with her chimney cake. Um, so she can't attend the meeting with Puff. So first of all, there's the remove method. Um, it's important to have the specific location within the database to remove the data um, when you use the remove method. Um, actually, when you uh, want to remove any data, you need the specific um, location. And um, also you have the set method, which you can use to um, set basically the um, data to null. Um, and then you have the update method, and I will go a little bit more deeper into that update method because with this you can delete multiple data points. So as you can see, we have here some paths to delete. So um, if you remember, our uh, JSON was called my appointments, and basically we add this uh, user IDs or these uh, those UIDs we generated um, as the path and set this path to null, which essentially deletes the data. Um, and that's an easy way to delete multiple data points, but we only want to delete one data point, so we use remove method. And um, one important thing about this is we don't get an information if the appointment was successfully deleted. Um, we just don't. Um, so for an improved UX, it would be nice if you would, first of all, check if the string is null, because if the string is null, um, you will just essentially delete the whole my appointments JSON tree. Um, and if you haven't got the um, appointment in your database, it won't give you any error message. So and here we can see the removal in action. We add the code, the um, appointment was successfully deleted, and yeah, it's immediate. So as you can see, making an appointment scheduling app in Flutter, JavaScript, and Firebase real-time database is extremely easy. And we have three happy customers. We have Sparky, we have Dash, and we have Puff. 
Um, yeah, and if you folks have any questions about this, you can ask them later in the Q&A. Also, you can check out our code um, on GitHub. We have made some QR codes that you can scan. And yeah, thank you so much for listening. Yeah, so we have the QR code, sorry, <laughs> we have the QR code in Flutter. Um, if you'd like to take some time to, th this one is not one of the, the good ones that you're trying to scan. This is the code. We also have in the next slide, the one for JavaScript. And by the way, this tutorial, I have created a video uh, only in JavaScript. If you like would rather watch something 1.5 and just go and follow it, <coughs> there is also like a step-by-step -step tutorial that you can get everything. And of course, in this link here, the GitHub uh, with the code that contains uh, these links that I talked about. And yes, thank you very much for coming, listening, 